Have you seen this girl that's gone viral for staying in an Airbnb that put a picture of Ronald Reagan on the tile in their shower? I have been crying laughing at this chick's videos. It's me, Ronald Reagan. It's okay, you can take a shower. I'll just be right here. Why is he there? It's a mystery we'll have to solve at a later time, I guess, because today we have a five-star orange juicy alert. Why so many people in the Bachelor franchise are refusing to go on Bachelor in Paradise? Are celebrities right that the new Georgia voter laws are Jim Crow 2.0? Selena Gomez pushes to take another bold step in promoting transgenderism to young girls, and GoFundMe is the next corporation the left is pushing around to do their bidding. I'm Alex Clark, and this is Politics. not shocking at all story is about Bachelor Nation. No, it isn't about Rachel Lindsay, don't worry. That's racist! Actually, it's about how ABC is struggling to get anyone from Bachelor Nation to agree to going on Bachelor in Paradise this summer. Imagine that! All of the woke contestants are going to pass because they think that's the morally upstanding thing to do, and all of the conservative contestants are looking at what's happened to Chris Harrison and Rachel Kirkconnell and going, you know what? I don't think I will. No, I'm gonna pass on that one. <laughs> Multiple sources talked to E about this. One said some are wondering what direction the season will take and are curious if it will strictly focus on contestants falling in love. Yeah, agree. My first thought when I think about the Bachelor franchise at this point has less to do with finding love and a lot more to do with critical race theory. So are you Chinese or Japanese? I live in California last 20 years, but uh, first come from Laos. Huh? A second source said they've put out several asks to Bachelor veterans. Many people are declining due to the current state of Bachelor Nation. A lot of people are removing themselves from the franchise. This is the beginning of the end, folks. Rachel Lindsay and her crew can either back the truck up or put the pedal to the metal and fully drive this bus off a cliff. Just rev the engine and drive it over so it explodes into a million tiny pieces and there are no survivors so that we can move on. Uh... Okay, uh, okay. Uh, Tina, you're kind of headed toward the only other car in the lot. You have plenty of time to turn, Tina, so just go ahead, turn one way or the other. You're just swerving back and forth. Turn one way and stick with it, Tina. Tina, for the love of God, turn away or stop! The brakes, Tina, on the left, you're about to hit that car, the brakes, hit the brakes! Uh. ABC and all the Bachelor execs are in a cult. When your time in the cult comes to an end, you have to leave it and get help, and while it is embarrassing, you have to admit that you were in a cult, but at least you survive. Or you can drink the Kool-Aid and die from poison, but at least you have your pride. No one gets out of the woke cult alive. It's not if I get canceled, it's when. The poison, the poison for Cusco, the poison chosen specially to kill Cusco, Cusco's poison. There's a lot of talk about the new Georgia voter integrity laws. Celebrities and our favorite brands are calling it Jim Crow 2.0, like Tyler Perry, Coca-Cola, and Delta. Say something again, say one more thing. I'm a pimp slap you. Say it again. A bunch of Hollywood celebrities have said that they're now going to boycott the state of Georgia because of their new voter integrity laws. A lot of movies are filmed in that state, which is why they're saying that. One of the people raising a big stink is Tyler Perry, who is asking the DOJ to investigate the state for this. I'm a real thug. I'm a O-G-M-A-D-E-A. -E Tyler Perry said, I'm resting my hope in the DOJ taking a hard look at this unconstitutional voter suppression law that harkens to the Jim Crow era. Remember, Jim Crow era refers to state and local statutes that legalized racial segregation. They existed for about 100 years from the post-Civil War era until 1968, and their purpose was to marginalize black people by denying them the right to vote, have jobs, pursue education, and more. And if black people attempted to defy Jim Crow laws, they could face arrest, expensive fines, and even go to jail. So the question is, what are these new Georgia voting laws, and are they on par with Jim Crow era segregation? No. <laughs> 
No. Many leftists believe the new law does further Jim Crow laws because it requires everyone to have a valid ID to vote, which 97% of registered voters already have, by the way. The only thing Jim Crow-ish is the racist idea that black voters are not smart enough or capable of getting an ID, which by the way, if they don't have one, they can get it easily and completely free. And having a valid ID will replace Georgia's super controversial signature match program, which caused thousands of votes to be disqualified in the 2020 election. It's not racist to require an ID to vote. This has been a talking point of the left for decades. They want to make it easier to cheat. That's literally it. An ID is required to do almost everything in this country, including the vaccination that the left wants everyone to get. No, I, 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 you're right. So here's what's insane. Both Coca-Cola and Delta Airlines, two of the biggest companies in Georgia, called out this law as racist and said they don't support it. But according to documents obtained, the CEO of Coca-Cola requires a photo ID to be shown in order to gain admission to Coca-Cola's annual shareholder meeting, LOL. Yeah, this is awkward, I know. <laughs> also, have you ever gotten on a Delta flight where you didn't have to show your ID or any flight for that matter? Listen, you little wiseacre. I'm smart, you're dumb. I'm big, you're little. I'm right, you're wrong. And there's nothing you can do about it. Good thing I don't drink Coca-Cola. I mean, Coca-Cola. <laughs> oh. Selena Gomez, Brie Larson, Eva Longoria, Amy Schumer, and over 400 other women in entertainment and politics who pride themselves as being feminist leaders all signed a letter from GLAAD, the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation, calling anyone who disagrees or questions the trans agenda a bigot. Showtime, folks. The letter called out so-called feminists who support, for example, not allowing biological men to play women's sports and said that they're not real feminists. The letter says their vitriol is, in fact, not not feminist at all. True feminists do not wish to limit any woman's identity or freedom to fully be herself. Allowing transphobic rhetoric to go unchecked also strengthens the legislative efforts of anti-trans politicians who now cloak their bigotry in language about protecting or supporting women. The letter was also signed by several organizations that claim to be for and about women, like the Women's March and Time's Up. Are you are you kidding me? You know what? I hope you know, if you're a gay man or woman, GLAAD doesn't care about you. They have moved on from you. They used you, and then when gay marriage became legal in 2015, they dropped you like a sack of hot potatoes because you were worth nothing to them. They needed a new cause to make money off of, so they moved to the transgender movement. When that's done, they'll drop them too. These organizations and causes like GLAAD or the Women's March exist to win over voters, but they have to have a cause to scare people about so they can get people to vote for the left. That is why they are allowing the trans movement to hijack the feminist movement. They never cared about the gays, truly, and they never cared about women. It's just another fraud scheme in a sea of lies that the left tells. Once again, things that could have been brought to my attention yesterday! There was a GoFundMe for a group of parents in Virginia who were fighting against a school district pushing critical race theory. But after left-wing activists and race baiters complained and reported the page, which had raised over $4,000 in a few days, GoFundMe got scared, caved to them, and removed the parents' GoFundMe, stating that the fundraiser had promoted prohibited conduct. Are you totally deranged? GoFundMe, another organization completely controlled by the mob. No free speech, no thinking aloud, no ideas that aren't deemed acceptable by the left-wing nut job security guards. I don't know who you are or where you came from, but from now on, you do as I tell you, okay? I need you to watch this viral TikTok, and I need you to understand that if this woman is you, you are one of the biggest problems hurting the conservative movement today. Biden's never been your president. Trump has been the president the whole time in charge with the military. What's going on right now, Biden has been dead since last year, and all of this is just a show to show you stupid people how bad it really could be. So when Trump does verbally come back and say that he's been president the whole time and all the that he has busted, took under, and all the devil and the demon people are gone, you guys are going to go, oh my God, you guys weren't lying. So... Uh, yeah, she's right. Freak of the week. I know it's Monday, but freak of the week. There are thousands of people out there like this. Certifiable, no doubt about it. You're in a cult. We need to pray for her. Amen. But we also need to get her the hell out of here. Amen. Amen.
Okay, a little streaming update. Loved Behind Her Eyes. Absolutely unexpected ending. Super quick binge watch, so I appreciated that. Also, I watched that Blockbuster doc on Netflix, and I really like that one, too. Just a few suggestions if you're looking for things to watch. Hit that heart button. There's a lot to discuss in the comments today, especially requiring an ID to vote. There's a lot of confusion about that and misinformation, so please share this episode to your stories to get the truth out and hit that save button. We're back tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. It's pop culture without the propaganda every Every single day. I'm Alex Clark and this is Poplitics. Also, I wouldn't have worn flip-flops with this dress normally, but um, I only brought one of my high heels, so I am forced to wear these. Typical Alex. Click below to watch yesterday's episode. Please subscribe, thumbs up, share this video, and ring the bell for notifications so you never miss the conservatee. And make sure you're following this show at Poplitics on Instagram for even more conservative content.